is fear uh, is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up by fragments into narrow domestic walls where the words come out from the depth of truth where tireless streaming stretches its arm towards perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary deserts and of dead heaven where the mind is led forward by the in the ever-widening thought and action into the turn of freedom, my father led my country away. Thank you, Narayan. Now I take the opportunity of welcoming you all for our Friends on Same Wavelength special endowment lecture in memory of late M.L. Swamigaru, who is my guru and mentor. This is our 161st meeting. That means we have covered 13 years, 5 months without a break, except for the COVID 3 months break. I take the opportunity of welcoming our fellow Fosfolians, Fosfolian Chennai Adair Group, ICC Cupertino, Fosfol in Hyderabad, Fosfol in Vijayawada, and some of the members who are joined for the first time, and my own music group members, as well as Evergreen Seniors Group, they are all here. I welcome them all for today. And it gives me a great pleasure of welcoming our distinguished speaker, who happens to be our Vice President, none other than Professor Dr. R. V. S. N. Sharma, who is a highly qualified medical man, MD, MSc, FCGP, FRCP, Glasgow. FRCP Edinburgh and is a senior consultant physician in Manipal Hospital, Bangalore. The topic he has chosen today is a very, very useful topic, especially for the senior citizens called frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder. I am sure as some of them may be suffering from it. Let them listen to our learned speaker. And is our practice to circulate the bio data of the speaker in our invitation itself, as well as we have repeated twice, and also we we ask our joint secretary to present the detailed bio data at the time of meeting also. So now I request upon our joint secretary Ananda Kumar to introduce the speaker over to. Joint Secretary Ananda Kumar, please. Good evening, dear friends. First of all, founder Sri M. L. Swami Endowment Lecture is on frozen shoulder by our Vice President Dr. Rajkonda B. S. N. Sharmagaru. He regularly updates about 200 members in his CME group on developments in medical science through Dr. Sharma's CME Forum. His CME presentations are made available on his personal website www.drsharma.in and also his video lectures on his YouTube channel Dr. Sarmaji YouTube. These details are given in the biodata already circulated. As an extension of his passionate educate, educating pursuits, today he will educate us on frozen shoulder. He meticulously keeps his two dates with our Ananagar Kosal team for Dr. M. L. Swami and Srimati Rangamani endowment lectures every March and September. He has formed a cardiometabolic forum along with his cardiology colleagues. It meets bi-monthly to update senior consultants on new developments in the field of cardiology, diabetes, and lipidiology. All of you know that this medical therapist teacher is equally proficient in Hindu philosophy, scriptures, Vedas and mantras, Telugu and Sanskrit lit literature also. Over to Vice President Dr. Arvind Sarmagaru for knowledge sharing his favorite and humble past pastime. Thank you very much. Thank you. One more announcement. As you know, M.L. Swamigaru is the founder of the Friends on Same Building chapter at ICC Cupertino. 
started as a small group of five to ten members, which grew like a banyan tree and spread into about four to five chapters in India. So now it is the turn of our speaker, distinguished speaker, to deliver his lecture. Members can listen to the lecture and then put up their questions either in the chat box and wait and present their questions at the end of the meeting. We will be too happy to clarify our doubts. Over to Professor Dr. R. V. Yeshan Sharmagal. Thank you very much, my brother, Dr. V. S. Sharmagal, President of the organization. And I have the proud privilege of being invited to speak on the endowment occasion, endowment lecture of our revered ML Swami Garu and Rangamani Amma. Both of them are like our parents and I'm very dear to their hearts. And now, without wasting much of time, let us get into the topic, Trojan Shoulder. Here, I have purposefully muted all of you so that you will not be able to distract the presenter and the aware facility of opening the mic for any reason of cautioning me or guiding me is available for three members, Dr. Sharma B.S. and then Narayanan and of course our Ananda Kumar Ji who has been kind enough to say a few words of introduction. This slide that is on the screen reminds me of the various responsibilities that I am shouldering and always makes me better and better to do better service to the human being, the humanity at large and also to our fellow men. Now, Idam Namama, that means what? This is also not mine. Idam Api Namama means what? Everything is a summated knowledge of great scholars, scientists, experts in that field. And that whatever line of one prescription I write, one medicine, it, behind that there are several men who have contributed to that knowledge. I devote a lot to all those learned men who made us wise by their inventions, by their discoveries, by their teaching. I salute to all my gurus humbly and also to the Almighty with this prayer verse. Yonta pravishya mama vacha mimam prashuptam sanjeevayati Achila Shakti Dharaha Swadhamna Panyamcha Hasta Charana Sravana Swagadi Pranam Namo Bhagavate Purushaya Sukhyam Most importantly, every doctor should remember that the knowledge he has accumulated in, in his lifetime, say around 50 years for me from 19. 74 MBBS graduation to now, it is a summated knowledge of each patient and a patient is a textbook. Each patient is an open textbook for, for us to learn and I thank wholeheartedly all my patients who made me what I am today and contribute that little bit. Now, So I'm going to cover the topic in these uh, points. What about the shoulder joint? What is shoulder joint? What are the various moments at the shoulder joint? And normally, how to prevent those uh, bearing out of those moments and keep them intact? And what is frozen shoulder? What are the things that can cause frozen shoulder? And how it presents? What will be the symptoms and signs like? And what is its course? And of course, what are the treatment options available? More importantly, about the physiotherapy. So with this, I'm going to not go into the slides as such, because I would like to make it as a leg demo. 
leg demo means lecture demo wherein i will be demonstrating to you certain facts and all the things that i have said that i have i am going to cover will be more a practical application oriented uh, way i will try to present so i am switching off the presentation now human being are the only species in the creation of god where the shoulder mobility of the joint mobility at this point is greatest compared to any other creature we are the bipeds the all of the for quadrupeds their joints here the arm joints here the so called shoulder joints we call in them they are like leg joints the mobility is limited whereas for me as a human being i have such the advantages some disadvantages what are the advantages i can reach out with my hand and do several things which animals cannot do and i have a very special movement at the shoulder no joint in the body itself has got those movement which shoulder has got for example i have a wrist here what are the movements possible i can extend the wrist i can flex the wrist i can maybe a little bit turn inward turn outward barring that no movement is possible at the wrist at the elbow i have only two movements possible one and two a little bit of pronation and supination total four movements are possible but look at my shoulder joint concentrate whenever i am showing concentrate on the point i am showing you this is the right shoulder i am concentrating for convenience and this shoulder joint has got seven movements any other joint will have two three at best four this has got seven moments possible in shoulder joints i will demonstrate to you all the seven moments possible so i'll be a little away from the screen so that you will be able to see the moment okay okay i can bring my right arm in front of me okay i can cross it to the other shoulder also this moment this moment in this direction bringing it in front of the body is called flexion is called flexion there is another moment just opposite of that this is called extension taking my hand away from the body taking my hand away from my body is called extension this is roughly around 70 degrees i can do that flexion i can do like this i can flex it any much two moment one the flexion two the extension now what else i have got i have got abduction abduction means making it like that this is 90 degrees abduction and then 110 degrees 120 degrees 160 degrees 170 degrees almost 180 degrees and i can do with both the hands this is called the govinda position okay govinda means keeping this is one exercise i call it as govinda exercise wherein the person starts with the namaskar and goes and brings it as much high as possible so that is the abduction now what is reduction the one i kept here bring it back to the side of my body is called adduction so what did you learn you learn a flexion an extension an abduction over the head abduction beyond 90 degrees and an adduction four moments right now you have got a special moment at the shoulder which is called internal rotation most of you may not appreciate this moment because the other moments are obvious for you internal moment for example i keep the arm and i want to turn my palms towards the earth what is happening now the the moment is happening at the shoulder the palm is internally hand is internally rotated and even that that way also i can keep 
the extent of internal rotation from the neutral position of like of this position the neutral position each facing one another to almost each touching one another 180 degrees of internal rotation is possible okay now let's go to the external rotation so now here and i can externally rotate to almost 90 or more degree sectional rotation is possible the neutral position external rotation internal rotation extreme internal rotation so how many moments we have got one the flexion two the extension three the abduction four same abduction beyond 90 degrees the adduction bringing it close to my arms whenever i need and i have got the internal rotation extreme internal rotation and then external rotation all of them are occurring here total six moments i have showed you just one special moment which human being alone in fact all the six moments are available to the greatest degree in human being they are not available for any other animal species there are also mammals but they don't have this much amount of mobility at the shoulder that is why man could be so creative with his hand and the finger finger moment also give a, a tremendous extra power to do creativity like art painting music piano and then veena whatever you name sculpting pottery uh, you can imagine only imagination only is the is the limit with the hand the, the moments of the fingers the 10 fingers coupled with the shoulder make us have a wonderful person to perform wonderful things but unfortunately we are not using them to the extent to be used and making them wear and finally suffer with frozen shoulder now what is that special moment i said the seventh moment i have not yet demonstrated to you i will demonstrate now you can see when i stand and look straight i can move my hand circle 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 bigger circle biggest circle possible that is called circumduction so now what are the moments we have flexion extension abduction abduction above the shoulder extreme abduction adduction internal rotation external rotation and circumduction okay what is frozen shoulder then is it a disease of the bone no is it a disease of the washer that when two bones join to form a joint there is a washer god has given that washer is to prevention and those washers are called cartilages is it a disease of the cartilage no the bones are kept in place by various rubber bands and these rubber bands are called the ligament is it a disease of the ligament no then each joint is covered by muscles to make the moment possible and is it a disease of the muscle primarily secondarily they can be also so now not a disease of the bone not a disease of the washer the cartilage not a disease of the inner lining called the synovium which secretes small amount of lubricating fluid it's not a synovitis it is not a disease of the synovium it is not a disease of the rubber bands or the ligament it is not a disease of the muscles primarily and it is a disease of the covering of the shoulder the shoulder joint has got a a sort of a shaft and a cup the cup is this one this is the cup and this is the shaft the cup and shaft are like this and the shoulder joint shoulder is shoulder can move in the cup like that okay it can move forward backward abduction adduction 
and then anterior posterior like that in the cup this cup is called the glenoid forget about the big names there is a cup for the shoulder cup and shoulder shaft cup and shaft shaft is the fore upper arm and cup is the shoulder blade okay scapula the cup and the shoulder blade are covered by a sort of a towel like thing you can say suppose you have a precious thing what do you do you just wrap it with a wrapper a, a cloth wrapper so something like that a covering is there this covering is called the capsule what is it called capsule okay this capsule for the cup and the shaft to move inside freely like this the covering should be there so that they won't come off and the covering should not be tight to grip them from moment suppose the covering is very tight then it, it grips and it cannot move the covering should be loose enough for it to allow the moment and it should be there to hold them in place suppose in shoulder what happens is this capsule this is called the capsule of the joint is become stiff and then doesn't allow the moment to occur that is called frozen shoulder what is frozen the joint is frozen why it is frozen not because of the disease of the bone not because of the disease of the jabu or cartilage or the or the or the cushions or the washers not because of the inner lining called the synovium which gives lubricating fluid there is a lubricating just like you know engines are lubricated with the, with oil there is a lubricating oil synovial fluid it's not a disease of that it's not a disease of the rubber bands which hold the joint which are called the ligament not the disease primarily of the muscle it is a disease of the capsule of the shoulder fortunately or unfortunately this sort of capsular arrangement is maximum in the shoulder that is why the the freezing or frozenness occurs at the shoulder typically okay what happens if i have stiff i mean stiff capsule which doesn't allow the free movement what will happen three things can happen one any movement of the shoulder any seven movement out of the seven any one movement can cause pain number 2 it can cause restriction of movement rom rom is restriction of movement pain rom and finally limitation of movement that means it is frozen so much that that movement is not possible what will be out of these movements what seven movements what are the maximum affected movements I showed you in frozen shoulder flexion is no problem, generally not affected. Abduction up up to that level is no problem. Forty fifty degrees, ninety degrees may be difficult. One ten may be difficult. One forty may be difficult. One sixty is impossible. So all of you test whether you will be able to reach your arms like that up. If you are able to reach the arms like that up. that means there is no restriction of the abduction okay flexion is usually not affected extension can be affected you may not be able to extend the hand backward beyond probably here the person may go up to here they may not be able to go that much of extension now the what is the another purpose of extension to reach the back a person with short frozen shoulder cannot reach beyond the sacrum the hand can go only here it cannot go like that touching almost the center of my chest they will not be able to do like that that means they will not be able to you know women may not be able to hook the bras or people may not be able to reach height the upper shelf somebody don't they require somebody because the hand is not going up So the moment maximum restricted moments are the abduction above the shoulder above 90 degrees and the ability to reach the back of your chest with the hand is also restricted another thing that is restricted is 
the internal rotation internal rotation i showed you is this is there and th this is the normal neutral position partially internal rotated extremely internal you will not be able to do that so these are the few important tips for you to know whether it is internal rotation is possible how do i test myself try stand like this direct posture is very important in life if you stoop like that head dropped and then be always sitting and doing all sorts of diseases will come one has to be erect and very ready if possible with feet apart to do this little moments every day okay now what are the moments that are restricted in frozen shoulder what is frozen shoulder frozen shoulder is a capsule or the covering becomes stiffer medically it is called adhesive capsulitis itis is inflammation of the capsule adhesive it adheres to the joint this one that is the adhesive capsulitis forget about the medical name it is frozen shoulder what are the moments restricted mostly the abduction secondly the extension to some extent and thirdly the internal rotation ability to rotate like this what i am doing you know this internal rotation will not be possible okay external rotation also may be affected usually flexion is spared and adduction also is spared flexion is spared and adduction is spared so i told you what are the seven moments possible what is adhesive capsulitis it is a disease of the capsule and what what are the three stages stage of pain and stage of rom and stage of yet yeah, loss of moment lom restriction of moment in the first one and then lom is called the stage of thawing it is called thawing or freezing that's why it is called frozen shoulder okay it is stage of freezing or stage of thawing the word thaw t h a w thaw is to freeze thawing is freezing so what are the three stages the first stage is stage of pain the second stage is the restriction of movement the third stage is the lom loss of movement or thawing how long each of these last the painful stage last for about 2 to 4 months and then the pain slowly comes down the rom comes and patient restricts the movements in the joint particularly the abduction extension internal and external rotation flexion and adduction are usually intact and they are not affected okay and finally when the adhesion is there that stage the second stage lasts from 6 to 12 months and finally the disease the third stage is 12 months to 24 months total course and duration of the disease is 2 to 2 and 1/2 years after that again the adhesive capsulitis releases and you will be able to have free moments almost 80 90% of the moment will come back so it is not a disease which kills us but a disease which restricts our ability to function to the maximum possible extent with the shoulder joint then does everyone in the society get the frozen shoulder and who are the people who are prone to get the frozen shoulder one important contributory factor is age the the greater the age the greater will be the propensity for frozen shoulder having said that younger people also can get it due to various reasons the second important is there is a gender difference we don't use the word sex difference the word sex is not the right word in medical terminology to use it is called gender difference females are at a greater risk of frozen shoulder compared to men you may have imagined several reasons for that but there is a female preponderance compared to men age gender and then diabetes if you are a patient of diabetes the chances of you experiencing frozen shoulder in your lifetime is four to five times than a non diabetic person okay so age 
gender, diabetes, low thyroid, hypothyroidism, it is called. And in which case the TSH values will be high, it is hypothyroid, people with hypothyroid. Five, obesity. People who are mota, obesity, they have more problems with their all joint, particularly shoulder joint also. So, these are the common causes. Other thing is any trauma to the joint. Suppose he has fallen on the joint, on this side on the shoulder, injured his shoulder, because of the trauma, there could be adhesive capsule. Yes. And other rarer diseases like autoimmune diseases and diseases of the, uh, of the brain and blood vessels, diseases of the heart, you know, also produce. Yes. One thing is all of you will be hearing, I have a shoulder pain, can it be heart attack? My doctor told me heart attack can present with a shoulder pain. The difference between the heart attack pain and a shoulder joint pain due to adhesive capsulitis are the following. One, heart attack pain is short, sharp, and only intermittent. It doesn't continuously happen. And there's no restriction of movement in the heart attack pain. And it radiates from the chest to the shoulder. It starts here and may be felt here. Whereas here in shoulder joint pain due to adhesive capsulitis, it is persistent pain and also increases with the moment. There is restriction of moment and it is progressively increasing in its severity compared to that. That way you can be rest assured the pain you are having in the joint is not a heart related pain, which is a life threatening condition compared to a a shoulder joint adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder, which is an innocuous disease in terms of uh, bad outcomes, but it is good enough to cause restriction of our functionality. Okay? Now, I told you what are the beautiful movements at the shoulder, the seven things, what is the speciality as a human being? We are gifted with so many things. Unfortunately, we are not using the gifted human birth for our higher elevation. Jantunam narajanna durlabhataram. It's very, very rare to get a human birth. Having given this human birth, we must strive every nerve to be useful first to everyone around and in turn be useful to me also. This is what exactly is the teaching of all the philosophers. If your life is worth living, it means that you are helpful to people around you. And then, of course, secondarily to your benefit. Not primarily self, primarily others, secondarily self. Okay, little bit of digression. Now, we knew what are the moments that are restricted out of those possible. We knew what exactly is that, which part of the shoulder joint is diseased, the capsule part, what are the pretty causes which could lead to this one. What are the tests? Are there any blood tests to know whether there is or no? Except to know you have diabetes, you have thyroid, that can be tested. But for the shoulder joint pain per se, there are no blood tests. So what can I do? Can I take an X-ray and see? Usually, it is normal. Usually, X-ray is normal. Shall, shall I do an MRI? Not required. Don't waste money on MRI. At best, you can take an X-ray to rule out other shoulder condition or an MRI to rule out other dangerous conditions of the shoulder and not to confirm. A doctor does the test sometimes to confirm the disease. Sometimes he does the test to rule out very important dangerous condition. So here, <clears throat> if at all we do an MRI or this one in the typical, I mean, the presentation is a typical, this is only to rule out, but generally, I don't X-ray or do MRI for my adhesive capsulitis patient. How do I diagnose? By restriction of moment. What are the moments restricted? This one, only after that which they will be having. Beyond that, they will not be able to do that. Second one, the extension is only this much. They will not be able to go. Third one, they will not be able to bring it up to that midpoint of the this one. They will be only able to bring up to that much to the to the buttock level and not to the shoulder blade level. And lastly, internal rotation. Ask them to put the hands like this and then keep them in the neutral position. 
turn in downward, palms downward, palms outward this way, they are not able to do. These few tests will tell us that there is frozen shoulder. Once there is frozen shoulder, diagnosis is confirmed, then we have to stage it. Which stage it is? Stage is, first stage is the stage of pain, second stage is stage of ROM, restriction of movement, and lastly, stage of thawing or LOM, loss of movement. The idea is to help when the patient in whatever stage is to, re to regain the movement that is lost and not wait for nature's cure of two and a half years. And the medical management or physiotherapy is to shorten the two and a half years of suffering to six months or four months or three months and make him all right as early as possible. Supposing one does nothing, even then nature heals by itself in around two and a half years, most of the moments will be bad. Uh, and then only around 10% of the moment may be restricted, which you may not really appreciate, you know. We don't really require all the, I mean, 100% of the moment in the shoulder joint to be functionally useful. So remember the tip, you are not able to reach anything up and try to bring the box or suitcase from this one like this, or you are not able to hang on in the city bus or in the local train or in the aircraft, you know, while taxiing, they will take you in a bus. You want, you are looking for something. You are not able to go up and then hang on to that. So that is an indication. You are not able to put your hand like this and then button your, uh, you know, the inner layer or you are not able to do this movement. Remember, frozen shoulder is. And then what, what do I do? An algesia. Algesia is pain. An algesia is painlessness. How do I get it? By taking simple analgesic medication. But these analgesic medications have their side effects. So better we restrict the analgesic to SOS, that is whenever it is required, whenever the pain is severe, then only I do the analgesic use. Otherwise, not on a regular basis. The doctor will prescribe which is the best analgesic for your age, for your blood pressure, for your stomach, they will take care of all those things and they will prescribe the analgesic. The other thing is you can apply some bombs, ointments, and some heat application. There is uh, ultrasound therapy is there, infrared uh, therapy is there, uh, IFT is there, inferential therapy is there. These are all me measures which will try to loosen the shoulder cascade from outside. Their efficacy within quotes is rather limited. You can try, and, and some people it works, some it works. What are the things? Application of ointment, putting some ice pack, or giving some warmth should to the shoulder, or IFT, inferential therapy, or ultrasonic therapy, or infrared therapy. Uh, there are several modalities and combinations also are there. The most important part of treatment plan of frozen shoulder is the patient participation. Now, be very carefully what I am going to tell you. The physiotherapy, which are very simple exercises, one can do at home itself. Okay? Now, I will start with an exercise called ball walking. Okay? I am going to the wall. So this is the wall. And try to put a mark where you can reach. And this is this, this shoulder is the normal shoulder, let us say. I touch it, this shoulder is the frozen one. One can go up to that. And ultimately, every day slide the hand over the wall to reach that as much as you can. And try and uh, be around six inches away from the from the from the wall so that your moment will be maximum. Suppose you you go very nearer to the wall without any gap, then this moment is not possible. So first you use the normal hand to mark the line and try that line, try to meet that line with the abnormal hand. Understand? This is called wall walking. Okay? The second thing is, look at my elbows 
this is the elbow joint i am tucking them into my into my chest on the side of my chest i have tucked my elbow internal rotation external rotation internal rotation external rotation okay with the palm this way you can do with the palm upward also 10 times supposing you don't have frozen shoulder still you should do it because this is prevention this exercise is wall walking and then this has to be not not like this doing you have to fix the fix this one you know fix the elbow on the side of the chest and then do this this one okay with both the hands and more so with the affected hand okay that is the second exercise the third exercise let's say this hand is the diseased hand my left hand and this is the normal hand i use this this is doctor hand this this is this is the treating hand doctor this is the patient so the doctor hand holds on the patient and tries to lift the patient with the other hand luckily for me there is no patient here both the hands are doctors so i am able to lift supposing you are not able to one hand is not able to lift above your head the doctor hand will help you to lift it while doing that don't bend at the elbow keep the hand as straight as possible and try to lift so this is called the doctor patient type of experience with your own hand and if you feel uh, for normal individuals you should try to do without the help of the other hand on your own okay see at 70s or 72 this should be the type of moment which you should be having if you preserve it well okay if you don't preserve it will be lost okay now what else is there the third important exercise is towel exercise take a towel like this okay and then fold it nicely into a grippable size okay what i am doing i am pulling the hand upward using my towel the other end of the towel i am grabbing with my normal hand pulling normally it goes only up to that much i have frozen shoulder but now what is happening i am trying to is and then pull this the other thing is you can as though you are wiping your back or you can alternate this side also. okay and then this is called the towel exercise what it is wall walking patient hand with the doctor hand raising above the shoulder the towel exercise which i showed you either keep it in the midline like that and then do it or keep it on the side and then do it whichever is uh, both the both are good both ways you can improve what is the fourth exercise the fourth exercise is again fix the hand this part of the 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 elbow down and then try move every day like this this is this is, this is the internal rotation this is the external rotation this is the most commonly restricted moment internal rotation and external rotation with both the sides you do and uh, the other way of doing is keep my palms like that both of them close to each other opposite each other at right angles to the floor and parallel to the floor and right angles to my body and then turn them to in inward outward inward outward and then even outward while doing this you can use a half a kilogram weight of any packet you can have in the hand and with that weight you can have a salt packet or sugar packet or dal anything you know half a kilogram to 1 kilogram packet 
don't take oil or something you know it might spill and drop down okay to take a substance not uh, the chili powder or anything take which is you know good enough for you preferably a salt packet and then half a kilo salt packet and then that is good enough to give you the moment internal and external rotation so there is another exercise which you can practice he is with the door of the okay hold the door and then stand like this hold the door with your hand this again in most the shoulder front and back the moment is occurring at the shoulder feet together and planted firmly on the ground okay these are some of the few exercises which are good enough at home one can practice should i do it if i don't have frozen yes you have to do it even if you don't have frozen shoulder it prevents the uh, restriction of shoulder movement and gives you the good range of shoulder mobility and shoulder mobility is, is the key to live a full human life as i told right so good enough for the physiotherapy part of it analgesics don't take analgesics on your own except paracetamol other analgesics have to be decided by the doctor depending on your blood pressure your weight and your other comorbidities other diseases you have and your stomach you might prescribe a weaker or a stronger analgesic depending on the type of pain there are four or five classes of analgesics which class of analgesic suits you which particular member of that class will be preferable the medical profession doctor can be helpful to you is there anything else that can be done when you go to the people you know in the hospital the doctors they might suggest i would try to put a tube inside and then view what is happening in the joint and that is called arthroscopy there are joint specialists nowadays level an orthopedic now the joint specialist shoulder joint specialist alone there is a speciality and luckily there is no left shoulder joint and right shoulder joint specialist have not yet come in some time later they will come i am right shoulder specialist somebody is left shoulder specialist also might come but okay at the moment there are shoulder joint specialty it's a super super specialty the sub specialty of the super specialty of uh, rheumatology or the joint diseases and what they try to the moment you go to a super super specialist about with a frozen shoulder he will be asking you to allow you to put a tube inside and see what is happening the, through the arthroscope a tiny tube which will be around 5 6 mm thickness and through the tube the light will be passed into the little space in the joint they will do arthroscopy and then look at various structures and exclude other dangerous diseases and more importantly through the arthroscope he can loosen the capsule and cut the adhesions inside using a tiny little knife there a gamma knife or you can use even a small you know the ir knife to cut those adhesions inside the uh, joint capsule so very sophisticated procedure it might cost you around 2 lakhs to do that in an experienced hand nothing should happen if there some problem it could be bleeding into the joint and you may permanently lose the joint so i advise you not to do that for this disease there are certain diseases where super super specialists are very useful and essential for a disease which god himself heals in 2 to 2 and 1/2 years and i have methodology to tackle it my home the simple thing i don't recommend you to go and get an arthroscopy or arthroscopic dissection of the adhesion by a super specialist for frozen shoulder is there anything else that the pain is so severe unbearable particularly the pain is very much more during night the perioperative pain is very much more and they will not be able to sleep on the affected shoulder they will always have to sleep on the other side the moment they try to keep their body weight on the on this shoulder there will be pain in sleeping so you can help them by what is called hyaluronic acid an injection a chemical which we inject into the joint space through a little bit needle and syringe 
an outpatient procedure any orthopedician or a senior physician like me should be able to do that shoulder injection uh, in case the pain is very severe and it uh, helps for 4 to 6 months for pain reduction suppose that is not even not working in some patients there is an intraarticular steroid injection don't be afraid steroid steroid means some very danger bomb blast like that steroid judiciously used by a known experienced person for a particular indication is a boon for example for covid the treatment is steroid without steroid people will die so here also injection of the steroid into the joint is possible permissible and required only under the expert guidance so what else i have <coughs> moment under anesthesia m u a is also suggested this sometimes helps when the patient has got into as uh, the third stage or the thawing stage where the adhesion is so tight pain is not there but the moment is so restricted then what they do what we do is we anesthetize the patient under general anesthesia for 10 minutes the hand is uh, briskly moved uh, you know the adhesions are broken by physically moving the the humerus or this bone against that in the joint and then cutting open those adhesions this is called moment under anesthesia mue what are the possible treatments available analgesia primarily to reduce the pain in the first 2 to 4 months after that pain will not be there to prevent restriction of movement or rom what i suggested all the exercises the wall walking the hand raising with the doctor like this one and also the towel exercises and then the door exercise and also these exercises with that uh, half a kilo weight in my hand these are good enough to keep you going in case you require you may require an injection if the pain is severe injection may be hyaluronic acid or a steroid injection locally or sometimes you can do moment under anesthesia if the restriction is very very severe okay and finally arthroscopy and arthroscopic resection are required only in uh, very exceptional cases and we don't require to really jump to the super super specialist to go and do that okay there are some questions in the question box i will stop here it's around 45 minutes uh, and i thought i'll just see my presentation what i have i don't think i will i need a presentation to tell you these things maybe i'll just focus a couple of slides for you to understand and then uh, whatever i have to show uh, will be there in the presentation only but i'm not going to read those uh, you know slides and explain them for you because i have explained uh, these things very clearly at the outset so that is the shoulder blade and this is the clavicle the collar bone and then this is the humerus the shaft that is the glenoid where you have the the ball this is the shaft and that is the glenoid and this is the capsule not these are the ligaments there the rubber band and you have the capsule normally the capsule is little loose so that it is it allows the movement but in adhesive capsule the capsule becomes tight so the movements are restricted okay this this much amount of laxity <laughs> is required here for the capsule so that the capsule is loose enough for the joint movement to occur if it is this, this is now like this close and there is no this looseness then it will be difficult for it so these are all the various things i have showed you diseases also i showed you clinical pain and i, I told you the pain stiffening and thawing stages i have told you is on pain activities and then phase three diagnosis is simple no big big investigations are required and sometimes these people who do the arthroscopy they do an arthrogram inject a die and see what is the joint space this is the joint space here for the normal that is the joint space you can see joint space is restricted in the right side uh, diagram there this is more important this mri demonstrates this very clearly and this is normal capsule where you have that extra tissue for the moment in case of frozen shoulder that is very very narrow 
it doesn't allow the moon but we don't require an mri to diagnose the frozen shoulder it is only to exclude other dangerous conditions and not to confirm frozen shoulder and mri is required treatment i showed you analysis i showed you and then uh, physiotherapy i have told you the exercises part i told you and the patient's role ah this is very important is the pendulum exercise which i have not shown you i should show that pendulum exercise it will be like that i will show you what will happen is i allow the shoulder to drop and then making circles bigger circle and then smaller circle standing erect and then this. this is called the pendulum exercise also can be done which will be very helpful for the circumduction part of the shoulder joint okay and then what else is there this is a pendulum exercise holding a table of course you have to bend and do that this i told showed you know the doctor hand and and then the the towel exercise i have then the wheel exercise also you can do the other thing is you can put a pulley to your window and then put a this one and then you see the olden days what they were doing they were doing this sort of you know buttermilk preparation from the curd and then the zobi and then all this is lifting the head uh, pot of water on the head all the things have gone so shoulders have frozen because our habits have changed we must build in these things manipulation i showed showed you and uh, rotata and that's all is the is the i don't want to bother you about the presentation most importantly we have we are rarely allowing our hand to go up what we are using the hand this is the only moment we are allowing the hand to be food bed if possible food is on the bed okay who is responsible we ourselves nobody else has given these things as a cut we have begotten this this is this by our own behavior if your behavior in terms of your physical activity is not there you are sure to make the body suffer more and then out of the suffering gets all frustration and all this thing so you have to regular exercises good food habits keeping the mind clean and uh, nice and uh, calm and chinta rahita without the worry and the best way to have a productive long life isn't it so one wants a long life all right not only the quantity of life one wants a quality of life also to be very good so that is the productive useful for yourself and others and not a burden for others how can you ensure that the regular exercise regular food habits regular swadhyana reading into the scriptures you know you can see the library there yeah, on that side okay this is my philosophical library that is the medical library why these things things are shown not to show show up that i have all these books but to motivate you to get into the habit of good reading the wonderful saints from krishna vivekananda annamacharya purandara das tirukkural kavi tulasidas valmiki vyadavyasa read into those things these people have spent their lifetimes to energize us and give us the food for thought and then give us better happiness in terms of our lives we never care even to see the cover page of those books what is the use in living a, a sort of beastly life like an animal animals have three things in common with us they eat we also eat they sleep we also sleep they mate we also do that is that all about human life eat mate and sleep it's the only three things in life so many other things are so wonderful have a nice time if you have any question i'm prepared to answer now i'm allowing every participant to open their mics and then in a, in a way one by one you shoot the questions if you have don't try to clutter and then everyone opens mic at one shot and then trying to make a noise out of it we don't want noise 
we want musically the questions being okay. presented okay that's it doc there's some of the chat box actually yeah i will answer those at the end if there are any physical questions let me see okay doctor this is dyaneshwar yeah could you hear me doctor okay okay i have a frozen shoulder it is mm -hmm. connected with the well, neck pain also i have yes. or and is it to, because of the shoulder pain i have this thigh pain also there because no your question is well taken okay now shoulder pain is a disease of the aging i told you i mean you may be usually most likely are a diabetic too yes yes doctor yes. and you are your age is around 65 or 70 75 <laughs> yeah 70 with these two reasons not only your shoulder joint there are other joints in the body like the spine joints the cervical spine joints and the lumbar spine joints also will have similar yes. changes of uh, called you know spondylosis lumbar spondylosis cervical spondylosis along yes, with doctor. the shoulder joint the lumbar spondylosis is causing your thigh pain the cervical spondylosis is causing your neck pain the very arthritis or the or the adhesive capsulitis is causing your shoulder pain all are connected diseases they have to be tackled differently okay is a physiotherapist uh, can i consult a physiotherapist definitely or, you should consult an orthopedician first he will recommend what sort of physiotherapy is required then the physiotherapist will according to the prescription of the orthopedician just like medicine the exercises also will be prescribed keeping you everything like your age your other diseases and the mobility that you have all these things and then of course the physiotherapist will be doing the exercises and the doctor will be asking you to come the once in a month or so to review how you are doing uh, so that that the way physiotherapy straight away should not walk just as you don't walk into a, a sort of medical store and then buy medicines for you you should not buy exercises for you you should get the exercises prescribed by the competent physician or orthopedician and then go to the physician physiotherapist Thank you.